Hi, it's Dinosaur George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering your emails. Let's get into it. Uh, let's see, let's start off with Garrett from Grand Junction, Colorado. Garrett, Grand Junction, Colorado is pretty close to where I was born. Um, I love it up there. I wish I was there now because it's pretty hot here in Texas. Could raptors talk to each other? Because in Jurassic Park 3 it showed that they could. Well, talking to each other is not really the right, the right term. I know what you're talking about, but I know what you mean. Um, they certainly could communicate with each other. Now, it, it wouldn't be like you and I speaking to each other. They would use a variety of different ways to communicate. All predators who hunt in packs, and we have every reason to believe that raptors hunted in packs, uh, all predators that hunt in packs have ways of communicating. It's very important that they communicate because they have to to be able to coordinate an attack. But communication can come in the form of hand motions. It can come in the form of motions of the head, uh, moving of the tail. These things can be used to silently communicate. When you're sneaking up on somebody, you certainly don't want them to know you're there. So you could use silent methods. When I talk about hand communications, uh, I'm not talking about like our military. When you watch our military and they, you see these movies where they're making the different hand signs and they're doing this kind of stuff, that's not what raptors would do. It wouldn't be that. But I do think raptors would have the ability that even something as simple as flexing a claw could potentially mean something to another member of the family. So their communication would not be dramatic. It wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be talking like you and I talk. But I believe they certainly had ways to communicate. I think all, all animals communicate. All animals have ways to communicate with each other. And raptors would not have been any different. Okay, let's uh, take this one from Nathan from Manchester, England. Um, and Nathan, if I ever come to England, uh, which I'd love to do, I gotta make sure, I've got so many friends in England that I hear from, I would get, like to gather you guys all together and have a huge party. Uh, so one of these days we'll do that. Nathan asks, would a pack of Albertosaurus scare away a T-Rex if it made a kill and was alone? Yeah, absolutely they could. Albertosaurus is a, a lightweight by any stretch of the imagination. He's a big dinosaur, he's a big dude. Um, He's not as big as Tyrannosaurus Rex, but uh, he was probably a little faster than T-Rex, and he was certainly dangerous. So let's say there were three Albertosaurus, or heck for that matter, even two Albertosaurus, that came upon a Tyrannosaurus Rex that had made a kill. I do think they would challenge him. Uh, I think T-Rex would probably stand his ground for a little while, but a fight two against one is just not fair and T-Rex can only look in one direction during an attack, so it's not like uh, he could defend himself. So yeah, I think, I think the king of dinosaurs could be displaced by the prince of Canada, which is Albertosaurus. Okay, Alex from Richmond, Virginia. Hello again, DG. First of all, I must say your answers have been very informative and have really helped me a lot. Uh, you know, Alex, thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. I'm glad. I'm glad to be able to share whatever I can. I don't know everything by any stretch, but if I can give you answers that help, thank you so much, and I'm glad to hear that. Uh, here's what he wants to say. The concept of measuring the speed of dinosaurs has always fascinated me. How fast do you think Tyrannosaurus and Nanotyrannus were? Uh, man, I, I share your feelings, man. I'll tell you something, Alex. I think the idea of being able to estimate speed is remarkable. There's a formula that um, I think Dr. Farlow uh, from Indiana, if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Farlow is a brilliant man when it comes to estimating speed of dinosaurs. I believe he's, he's developed a, a, uh, a formula by looking at footprints and estimating speed. And it's, it's genius, it's brilliant. You ought to look him up, um, uh, Dr. Farlow, a brilliant guy. Uh, there's so many variables when measuring the speed of an animal that's no longer with us. We can do it by measuring femur and comparing it to tibia and fibula length. For you little kids, that's the upper leg bone compared to the lower leg bones, everything from the hip to the knee, compared to everything from the knee to the ankle. That's the, that's the bones we're talking about. Um, there's a formula that kind of helps us figure out whether or not you're fast or slow. We may not know exactly how fast you are, but we can determine. If your lower leg bone is longer than your upper leg bone, it suggests that you're fast. A cheetah's lower leg is longer than its upper leg. A horse's lower leg is longer than its upper leg. Um, and that's why those animals are as fast as they are. 
Um, based on looking at the skeletal design of Tyrannosaurus rex and Nanotyrannus, my best guess would be that for a short distance, Tyrannosaurus rex may have been capable of reaching speeds of upwards of 30 miles an hour, maybe 31 or 32. Now, he certainly could not maintain that speed, but I think, based on what I think, uh, I think it's reasonable that he could reach that speed. Um, Nanotyrannus maybe couldn't have reached the 30s, but I'll bet you he could have certainly reached the mid-20s, 25, 26, maybe 27 miles an hour. He could have maintained that speed a little bit longer because he's not carrying the mass of Tyrannosaurus Rex, but he certainly uh, he certainly was capable of running. See, here's the problem, Alex, with, with when we're estimating speed. Uh, you can take an elephant and you can watch how fast an elephant runs and you can say, okay, I know how fast they can run. But who's to say that that elephant is running as fast as he wants to run uh, or can run? Maybe he's running as fast as he needs to run for you, but he's not running as fast as he has to. Uh, all animals have kind of a supercharger or a turbocharger built in that when they kick it in and they kick into the high octane, they can move a lot faster than we think. If you don't believe me, look at video footage of a grizzly bear in an all-out run and it's like, wow, who would have thought that animal that big could run that fast? Okay, um, Warimo from Geneva, Switzerland. And Warimo, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, everybody that visits these uh, videos understands I'm terrible at pronouncing names. I mean no disrespect if I don't pronounce your name right. If I don't, please write me back and let me know the pronunciation and I'll, uh, I'll clarify that. Uh, in Switzerland, never been there, man. Would love to go. I love that country, though. He asked, who is the largest duck-billed dinosaur? The largest duck-billed dinosaur that I'm aware of is uh, a dinosaur from China. His name was Shantungasaurus. Shantungasaurus. He is gigantic. Huge. He makes the duck-bills in North America look like ducks. I mean, this is a big dude. Uh, I want to say he's in excess of 52 to 54 feet in length, if I understand correctly. He's 52, 54 feet long, and he's like 17, 18 feet tall. He's, he's a monster, much bigger than any duckbill I've ever seen. I'm kind of stunned they grew that big. Okay, this is, comes from my friend Nadav from Tel Aviv, Israel. I hope things in Israel are going well for you guys. Um, he says, thank you for answering my previous question, and you got my name right. That's good. That's good to hear, Nadav. I'm glad to hear that, man. Uh, I have another question. The shape of the hip bones and legs in dinosaurs is an adaptation for what? What changes in the environment factored those with legs, or favored those with legs pointing more downward? It's all about food, Nadav. It's, it's a brilliant question, and it's all about food. Legs that are sticking directly down from your body allow you to move more efficiently, which basically means that it gives you the ability, if you're a plant eater, to travel greater distances and therefore get to more food sources. And if you're a predator, it allows you to move quicker to be able to catch the prey. So those legs, what made dinosaurs so advanced and so far superior to the mammals and reptiles of its time, are that they weren't burdened with those legs that stuck out to the side, which made them waddle from side to side when they walked. But it's kind of like taking a um, an Olympic sprinter and putting him up against uh, a turtle. Uh, you can move faster, you can get there quicker, which means I can catch more food, I can eat more food, I can find more food, and all of those means that it gives you an evolutionary advantage over those that can't, and therefore that's why dinosaurs were so remarkably successful, and it is strictly a matter of getting to food fast is why they evolved those remarkable legs. A uh, Good question, man. Okay, uh, Zach from Mesa, Arizona. I love Mesa, Arizona. Hi, Dinosaur George, it's Zach again. Do you think that if dinosaurs were alive today, that the big meat eaters would look at human source? Or do you think they would just look at us and not waste any energy? Uh, Zach, first of all, my friend, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting concept. Uh, I believe the big dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus and Albertosaurus and those guys, they wouldn't have given us the time of day. They're completely, we would have been uh, insignificant to them. But. Uh, if we would have had the fate of running into raptors, unfortunately, raptors would have absolutely thought of us as a food source, and they would have taken advantage of eating you and I rather quickly. All right, that's it for this uh, segment. Thank you so much. Go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Join my mailing list. Follow me on Twitter and follow me on Facebook. For you young kids out there, practice your manners, practice your reading, and I will see you all again soon. Take care.